Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about uh, packaging within InDesign as well as compressing uh, files for uh, delivery. Packaging is a way of collecting all your assets that you use within a design project, uh, particularly images um, or, and or fonts. Um, it's a way of uh, being able to pass information or files to another person or with all of your content. Um, if you've done enough work in InDesign, um, you know that your files are kind of, you know, your files that you're importing to InDesign live in this folder or that folder or maybe a different hard drive. Um, what InDesign does, um, it can do, is actually collect all your assets and put it into a collective folder. Uh, make it easier than having to hunt down everything you know one at a time um, but the idea of also packaging is that if you pass it to another designer or a, a printer um, they would have all the materials um, as you would have at your own desk and so uh, one thing you might want to do before you package anything is you want to check out your links um, the more links and files that you have on there the more it keeps up with everything and InDesign works very similar to how a web page works. Um, if you built a web page, images don't live technically on the page. They're just kind of a placeholder in the do in the page. And then when the page is called up onto a device, it will actually load the image separately than the than the uh, page itself. Um, this actually helps uh, streamline you know uh, pages loading on your device. InDesign works exactly the same way. It knows where all your files live, um, and it doesn't necessarily live in the same folder as, as opposed to websites. Um, they can live in multiple folders, different hard drives, also different computers. So in this case, I like to look at my links and look at this particular column right here, the little warning sign. And if there's nothing here, that means everything's cool. But then if there's a check mark, it means that there's something missing that needs to be relinked. Um, anytime you take one of your files or links and move them out of the original folder into some other folder, it will know that it broke the link because it knows the path. For instance, if I come down here, I will see that there is a path in the link file. I want to stretch it out so you can see it all. So here's the original path. It's a um, um, hard drive, uh, folder, semicolon, folder, colon, another folder and then ultimately the PDF right here and it's all separated by a uh, colon so that way you can understand like the path break or the, the folder it, uh, it lives in so uh, the easy thing to do is to highlight it and say relink or no sorry relink with the chain link it will open it up and say where is this file and again you have the path that you can follow but I intentionally moved this file uh, for the purpose of this demo. So this is the original path. And you can see here, here's the InDesign file, which matches the same name, but the PDF has actually been moved, again, on purpose for this particular demo. And I want to back it out. I moved it out one folder, and this is the file that it was originally looking for. You can just match the name in the folder as a, to the title bar. And I want to relink it by saying open, and then presto, it knows where the file is now. It pulled the proper page, and now it's all set to go. Now, once you have all your links kind of covered here, um, you know, the next step is just to package it. The package process can be found up here in the InDesign menu under File, down to Package. The package process is a series of steps. Uh, the first step is basically an overview of your entire document. It can actually tell you how many fonts you have in your document, uh, what fonts are embedded. Um, this would be uh, here the links. It knows that there are six links. None are modified. None are missing, which is the key. Um, if you decide to use a, the packages without the, with the missing image, um, again, you would have the placeholder image, not the actual full-size uh, high-resolution file that you were used to working with. Um, and it will not display properly when you print it or um, export it. Um, and I can look at a detailed look. I can see all the fonts that are being used here. Here's a list of all the images. Again, they always like to give the warning sign just to make sure you double check you have everything. 
and then it talks about your colors if you get very deep into the specific colors or CMYK process and inks which we're not in this class and then it gives you like all sorts of print settings and any, any plugins and this is merely a summary page um, you can simply once you verify that you have all your in images in place and they're all linked in a font you can just say package of course it will generally it will ask you to say to save it before you package it now what the package folder is going to do um, what the, the package process will do is actually create a brand new folder and what's it going to do it's going to it's going to collect all your assets that you use into the project I want to put this onto my desktop and then it's going to name the file the same name as the file that you started with so it's very convenient to kind of have those your file name uh, named up front so you never have to change it again and then if you come down here at the check boxes here uh, it's going to copy fonts um, this is particularly helpful because uh, not all computers have the same fonts you do it's it's good to make a copy of that font and then that will be passed along to the next team um, it will also copy the link graphics so again all the images that you have on your on that document will now make a copy of it and put it into the new folder it will update the graphics links in that package so that way because um, also part of this package is going to create a duplicate file that you've been working on and it will update all the links uh, within that one file and the next two items down here is include an IDML file so you'll have an InDesign brand new InDesign file and you will have a duplicate file in an IDML version and for those of you who work in InDesign IDML is uh, what's called InDesign markup language it, this allows older versions of InDesign to be able to open up the file um, if you're working in a 2021 um, and you try to you know, open that file in a version that's like say night 2020 InDesign won't open it uh, unless you have an InDesign file so it's this is the way of making files backwards compatible for somebody if they need it and also what I always like to include is just a PDF or print and in this case um, I generally do high quality um, it's a preset that's uh, pretty standard in, in the industry and once you make sure you have all these uh, copies of your fonts and your links uh, with the updated link package and then an IDML and a PDF you say package um, and it's going to go straight on my desktop I can see right here and then um, of course it always like to give you some warnings it, it you know it knows that there is a text box on page three that has text that does not all fit onto the t into the text box um, in this case I'm just going to let it go because um, I think I double checked that but something you always want to make sure that you have your you know no overset text um, which means that there's the text box that has more text in it that can actually show um, in this case I'm just going to move forward and then suddenly it makes this package um, and then it basically gives you the information here that has been packaged and I'll say okay and now I want to put this away for a moment and go to my desktop find my desktop and look here and right here is a package folder I highlight the package folder you can see here here's the idea the InDesign document that I created here's the PDF and then here's the IDML file along with all the fonts that are used on the project and all the links all right now I can just scroll through here here's the um, the file it's on single pages uh, which is the standard preset you can customize that if you'd like but otherwise single page is just fine for this purpose and there's all eight pages of the document now once you have the package folder um, you know if you if you send enough attachments on email um, attachments can get lost or uh, corrupted um, the, the uh, compression or uh, stuffing of a folder allows it to be able to be less susceptible to being uh, corrupted um, and the, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC it's the same thing or same language um, in PC or in Mac language it's compress and I think in PC it's uh, stuff or stuff it um, and so basically you just want to highlight the folder um, this is accessible on both uh, devices and I want to right click on here and say, say compress and what you're going to see is that it's going to compress this and then suddenly there is um, a zip file 
and it's also known as zip, zip archive. And again, a compression is just a, uh, a way of archiving files. Um, you can see it's all in one. If I were to double click this, um, it will actually uncompress itself and then the folder will appear in its entirety with all the content. Um, so I'm just going to do it just to show you. And it knows that there's a duplicate file with the same file name. So this is the original I created from, from InDesign package. And this folder is created from uh, the compression process. But again, it has all the links. Um, and when you're sending files, and if you're not familiar with this, when you send files over the internet, actually your file is being broken up into pieces and then reassembled on the other side. Uh, a compression or a zip file um, allows it to not be so broken, not be broken up. Um, and oftentimes, in some cases, it will actually make a file size a little bit smaller to send. So, originally this file was 8.5 megabytes, and then you can see on the z compressed file, the file is 5.5. .5. So it actually in allows it be able, you know, be shipped a little bit faster, emailed a little bit faster. But otherwise, uh, the comp the package in the compression process is. Uh, um, walks you straight through it and this is the f this is the file the compressed file or the zip file is what you would turn into uh, canvas because uh, it basically you can't load a folder um, from experience in canvas you have to in individually load all these things at one time as opposed to a compressed or zip file one stop one one upload and you're done and then the other when I receive it I open it up and then I have all your content if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, thanks.